Hello, welcome to Feature in a Short. This is Justin Joseph Hall, owner of Four Wind Films. This is a podcast made for filmmakers by filmmakers, and it's more of a technical podcast. So today we'll actually be talking about exporting a proper master file to prepare for your archives or delivery in order to future-proof your final file and what you've invested all your time and money into. And so if you're not a producer or involved in post-production somehow, This podcast might not be for you, and you might want to go back to other episodes that aren't quite as technical. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Let's start with equipment. What do you need to export a proper file nowadays? So the difference between a feature and a short for creating master files is once a file gets over 60 or 80 gigs or so, it can be a lot more unwieldy for smaller computers. Because of this, I suggest at least to have the following equipment. 16 gigabytes of RAM, 200 gigabytes in the video card. Your main hard drive needs to have a little bit of room to work. So, you know, you want to have at least 20 gigabytes open there, I would say. You know, these files, depending how long they are, I mean, they can be up to 200 gigabytes, maybe more, if you do a feature film properly. So... If you're exporting a 200 gigabyte file, you want to have at least probably 300, but at least 250 on there. Uh, The other thing that you want is a hard drive that has a Thunderbolt connection or a USB 3.0 connection. Okay, Uh, it's not worth it to try to do it with a USB 2.0 when there can be other variabilities that cause issues for exporting. And the other thing to troubleshoot if your computer is overheating, I use iStat Pro. You can see the temperature of your computer and... If it gets too hot, put in an air conditioner into the room. You've got to cool it down. The computers run really, really hot when it's doing a lot of work. So uh, that aside, let's say you have the proper equipment. Even if you just aren't working off a laptop and you're working off a computer, nowadays, most likely you're fine. So what is a high-resolution master file? It is the highest resolution that you shot at, the stuff that you created, If you have like mixed footage at HD and UHD, you want to be exporting at UHD, at the larger resolution, because you don't want to lose those extra pixels when you're creating a master file. The idea of this whole exporting is that you're future-proofing. So if you only have an HD delivery now, but in the future, somebody might come back to you in five years. I actually just had this recently. Somebody asked me, and I always export the highest resolution, and we didn't have the UHD I didn't even have to open the project because I know I always export the highest resolution possible for my master file. So you want to export at your highest resolution that you shot. So if you shot like a couple scenes that are in slow motion that are HD, I would recommend up-resing those in Resolve. Resolve is pretty good at up-resing. You can also do it in After Effects. If you have most of your movie or even, even let's say a quarter of your movie is in UHD, I recommend mastering at the UHD level, no matter what your deliverable is, because you can always create an HD master file from the UHD. That's why we always go to the largest resolution possible. And when you're creating a master file, when you're creating the resolution, there is never any letterboxing. And letterboxing are those black pillars on the left and right of your footage or on the top and bottom of your footage. You do not want that in a master file ever. If you want to create other encodes from your master file, if you have letterboxing on it already, it's going to be a huge problem because if somebody wants a four by three image of it, you're going to have to letterbox it again, and then it's going to have a whole black square around your actual video. If you have that, you're just losing resolution. A lot of times you're already going down to a lower resolution when you're making an encode, and if you already have the black pillar boxes, then you're you're losing those pixels where you could actually stretch out the image to be larger on your future transcodes that you're going to deliver. And just so you know, encode, transcode, they're basically the same thing. Transcode just means to change the codec, and encode is to create the codec. The other thing that I hear arguing for letterboxing, a lot of producers always say this, and these are not professional producers when they say this, but they go, it looks cinematic to have the black boxes on top and on the bottom. And I will say, no, it does not look cinematic to have the black boxes on the top and the bottom. It looks amateur because feature films are usually shot at a wider aspect ratio than standard HD. 
So standard 16 by 9. And because of that, when you encode from a master file to 16 by 9, it's going to have the pillar boxes to keep the same ratio so there's no stretching. That doesn't make other videos look cinematic. It just means that you had a high quality video file that got transcoded and it needed letter boxes for the specific format. And just because the other movie is high quality doesn't mean creating a poor master file is going to make yours look higher quality. If you want to get a cinematic look or a cinematic aspect ratio, you can shoot in that cinematic aspect ratio, but don't include any black pixels on the top or on the bottom. Avoid letterboxing is, is the main point. Okay, on to the next thing. So codec. Uh, a lot of people want to know what is a finishing codec, what's okay to use. Uh, number one, H.264 is not a finishing codec, period, never. The only possibility where you'd use H.264 as a finishing codec is if you shot an H.264 with like a DSLR. Then maybe I could consider using an uncompressed H.264, but you better not be using like a Vimeo preset or anything. And I still wouldn't recommend that. I'd always recommend going to at least ProRes 422, and I would suggest HQ for a minimum of a codec quality-wise. The two main kinds are DNX HD slash DNX HR or ProRes 422. And for each of those, I would suggest ProRes 422 HQ. That's high quality. Or if you're in HD, you can use DNX HD. And I would always use the highest option of DNX HD. You know, if you do like 2398, uh, DNX HD 175 is pretty standard. There's an X after the number. That means it's 10 bit. Most things without the X in DNX they're 8-bit instead of 10-bit. Most cameras, unless you shoot shoot with an expensive camera like an Airy or a higher-end camera, most often you don't need the X. But I would suggest just using the X every time for a master file because it creates a little bit larger file, but it's not that much. And it's 10-bit colors. So you just get more colors available with the DNX HD 220X or 175X. Now, I would suggest we're moving into the future and we're talking about UHD or anything. DNX HR is sort of the new codec that is a little easier to understand than the DNX HD stuff where the numbers change all the time. You always want to use as a finishing file at least DNX HR HQ. And that's just like ProRes HQ. It means high quality. Okay, so we want to use DNX HR HQ or better. So the best ones, what I always use, you use ProRes 4444, 4, 4, 4, or you'll hear it also said ProRes 4x4, or DNXHR 444. 4, 4. And both of those have less compression. And so even if you shoot at a lower codec, most cameras, let's say an FS7 or um, a lot of mid-range cameras shoot at 422. If you think of it like a container, lower codecs are like a smaller container. And if you go to a larger container, all of the contents of the smaller container are going to fit into the larger container. And so that's what we're doing by moving to the 4x4. Sometimes you have to consider cost in this and how much a hard drive costs, how much room you have, whatever. But you're archiving for the future. No matter who you're working for, I would be finishing in UHD. It's an easy selling point. It doesn't take that much longer to do. As long as you have a good enough computer, you're not going to have that much issue exporting a higher res file, especially if it's like a three minute file. Give them the option of having UHD and your own reels are going to look better no matter what you're creating. But especially for something that's expensive, don't get rid of the amazing quality that you have. HD is one fourth the size of UHD. So, you know, 1080 is one fourth the size of pretty much all 4K files. You don't want to lose three quarters of your quality just because you didn't want to pay for a $100 hard drive. Because that's really what it costs. I mean, 200 gigs, that's nothing. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about codecs, another master file that you can consider a master file are JPEGs. Okay, like JPEG 200s um, or Targa files if you're doing animation. I've delivered those. Those are very high quality as well because you're exporting each individual frame. And that's basically what a video file does. But if you can't play it back, it's sort of cumbersome to do other exports from it. So I recommend doing a self-contained file that you can play rather than a folder full of images because then your images aren't even connected to your audio directly in one package. So in saying that, I would say DCPs are high quality. They're usually not the highest of quality because they don't take all resolutions like most things and they're just a list of JPEG 2000s. 
DCPs are not really master master files. They are deliverables. Just like an H.264 is a deliverable, don't use a DCP as a master file. As for audio, a lot of times you're going to get back printed masters for your mix downs for audio, right? So what do you do with that? How should you incorporate this into your master file? Sometimes you're going to get a stereo master file and a 5.1. My mixer always gives me both. What I would suggest is to export master files for each of the audios because you never know when it's going to be needed. Okay, so I'll export master files from each of those separately. You can also just export one master file as the stereo file, and there's a way to swap it in QuickTime 7, or you can re-export, but you have to change the sequence because 5.1 has six audio tracks. With the, the point one is an extra audio track, which is the sub. Usually it's good to already encode it into the 5.1 so the computer knows how to read it. And that's going into your different settings into Premiere or in Avid or wherever you're exporting from. You can also do it in Resolve. And that I'm not going to go through all the specific details in how to get 5.1 out of your system. But if you have questions, feel free to write my email and ask me. So uh, if you have different mixes, you kind of want to create a master file for each mix is all I'm saying. So even if you have a lot of times I'll get a stereo mix and then a stereo mix for the web. If you're going to use that stereo mix for the web, which, you know, makes it easier to listen on laptops because the speakers aren't as good, then you want to create a master file for that for for the web as well. So that's it for audio. Now we'll jump to graphics. So we're talking the master file. We're only talking about the original language that you expect to export at. Okay. so what kind of graphics should you include in your master file? Sometimes people also create a textless version, which has no text made by graphics at all. So that means no credits, no opening title, no nothing. So that way you can re-export and just throw the graphics on the master file and go to whatever language you want. If you want to do that, that's great. I wouldn't consider that a master file, but it's, it makes it easier to create other master files in other languages. But a regular master file, I would say, does not include subtitles. Take off subtitles. And the reason is, if you ever subtitle into another language, let's say it's in Spanish and English, and you submit to a French film festival, well, if you want to put French subtitles, and, you know, when they're speaking Spanish, there's English subtitles already on screen, you don't have anywhere to put your new subtitles. So you want to have a master file that does not have any subtitles on it. But I would include all other graphics that you created, the title, um, things that you can create subtitles for to translate them if you want to. And a lot of times you don't translate credits anyway. You might just add a translator credit or something in the subtitles. So I would include, you know, everything else, including like lower thirds and but just take off the subtitles and that would be your master file. Okay, so once you export, what should you label it? Number one, never write final because that's ridiculous. You never know when you're quite done exporting for the last time. Okay. Include a general label for the audio. Label it. Is it stereo? Is it stereo for web? Is it 5.1 audio? And then there's kind of two ways that I think of saving the final files. Number one, the export date. So you know which one's the most recent version. You can use the date for the latest version when it's the latest export, or you can use a version number. Some people use version numbers for that. This is how I usually do it. Date, year first, month, day, and then name of the project, and then what audio export it is. And if it's textless, you would label it textless. Another thing that other people do is they'll assign like a company code and they might have a data spreadsheet that says, well, what is the five letter company code that represents this movie? That way you know exactly what movie it is. And then once you have your file, you've exported it, you have maybe your multiple versions or whatever, you need to store every file in three different places. Okay, three different locations on the earth. Now, how can you do this? You can buy online storage buy some extra Dropbox storage or Google Drive or, you know, there's many services that have online storage for large files. You can make sure that that it uploads and then it's in one additional place. Another thing that you can do is buy another hard drive, put the files on there and give it to your trusted family or friend that does not live near you and not in the geographical region that you live in. Because let's say there's a crazy hurricane in the 
you know, the East Coast of the United States. And this is what you have to think about. This is a lot of time and work that you've put into this stuff. What I would suggest is find somebody on the West Coast or in the Midwest or somebody somewhere else where you can keep the file. Okay, so online storage is great because, you know, tech companies, they get paid to make sure that their stuff is redundant. That stuff's not going to go away. That's safe. Um, If you would also put it on like Google Drive and Dropbox, that might be safe. You wouldn't want to have something. I mean, there was one time that something happened with Google. Um, I mean, it was very short and there wasn't that many, but there were plenty of files that were lost. So if you would happen to have a natural disaster in your house and Google had a shortage at the same time for whatever reason, you want to have it in a third place. So whether that would be on, you know, another company's website or send it to a a different region uh, to a family friend or or anybody. So in the end, that can be kind of boring, but it is is like the most important stuff that so many people do not do and do not understand what creating high quality export means. And now you know that. So and and I th- I see this as a one of the biggest problems in our industry especially as there are less professionals in the industry creating videos. You do not have these high quality files anymore. You should know what a high quality file is and how to export it and save it. In the forecast to look forward to, oh, I just wanted to let you know if you like these episodes and these types of episodes, there is a lot more for you on the Four Wind Films website. We have a blog that is curated by Piper Worley, the amazing screenwriter. She curates and gathers filmmakers from all over the United States, outside of Four Wind Films, as well as us in Four Wind Films. I just wrote a recent blog on how to budget a documentary film professionally to submit for grants and different things. So go to the website, check it out www.fourwindfilms.com We have another new theme song this season and this one is by Sun Nectar who now goes by Brian Trahan and Brian happens to be our the mixer and editor of this podcast and he's the composer of any other music or sound effects that you hear throughout this season. So thank you very much to Brian and I guess I'll talk at you soon. Peace out.